in order to assist with the operation and maintenance of the Duraclass Sidewinder. The Sidewinder is a multi-season body that can be used as a standard dump body as well as a salt and sand spreader. This video will review the Sidewinder's general personal and property safety instructions, side and rear dumping operations, hoist lockout and body propping mechanisms, maintenance schedule, as well as parts repair. All operator and service personnel should review this video carefully before you operate or service the body and hoist. In addition, please carefully read the owner's manual before operation and servicing the Sidewinder. Duraclass is providing a product intended to be used by a person who has superior knowledge of the use of the Sidewinder. Personal and Property Safety Before operation, learn and practice safe use of controls. Clear the area of other persons and obstacles. Review all safety procedures. Do not operate this vehicle unless you have been properly trained, read and understand the manual, maintenance and operation of the Duraclass Sidewinder. Operating this vehicle under the influence of drugs or alcohol could result in injury or death. Follow local rules and law requirements for clearance. Avoid high voltage power lines, keeping raised body away from power at all times. Know the clearance of all overhead obstructions. Never drive the unit under any overhead obstructions or bridges in the body up position. Remember that chassis suspension or modification may affect height. Pre-trip inspection. Check that all lights are functioning properly. Test vehicle backup alarm and body raised warning light. Visually check unit and run through several cycles looking for leaks, broken, missing, or malfunctioning parts. Please contact your supervisor if any concerns exist. Please review decal warnings. All decals should be clean and legible. In transit instructions. While driving the unit when not in operation, the PTO should be disengaged. The hoist control valve is in neutral position and tailgate controls must be in locked position. Notice the body raise warning light should be off before driving forward. Side dumping operations. This is the RC440 control provided by Rexroth. There are three small red knobs next to the rocker switch along the bottom. From left to right, the knobs control the speed of the spinner, conveyor, and regulates the liquid. The rocker switch can be turned on which will activate those three processes at the set speeds. The screen above will show the rate of application. The conveyor is driven by a hydraulic motor coupled to a 25 to 1 ratio direct drive gear reducer. A crank actuated gate is located on the discharge side to control material flow. The polyurethane spinner is driven by a hydraulic motor and has 6 inches of height adjustment for various chassis heights. The chute is adjustable to allow material to be spread in various patterns and concentrations. Regardless of what position, the material only falls on one side of the spinner. Rear Dumping Operations Unit must be in park position before dumping to the rear. Vehicle must be on level solid ground while dumping. The operator must remain at the controls at all times during the dump cycle. As shown, the second lever from the right is the main control for lifting and lowering the dump body in the traditional position. You will see the red light located on the dashboard panel will indicate the body is raised. The tailgate controls must be released before the front of the body is two feet above chassis frame. To release the tailgate control, attached to the left, the large knob operates the air tailgate mechanism. Again, notice the light located on the dashboard panel will indicate that the air tailgate release is in operation. When operating, do not allow anyone to stand in or move an area where an upset load may fall. Pinch points exist, stand clear of body while in motion. To operate the rear dumping operation, ensure the PTO is engaged. Note that the PTO light shown here will be illuminated, and truck engine running at a speed slightly faster than idle, simply release the control handle collar lock and move valve control and cab to raise position. To lower body, move valve control and cab to lower or forward position. When body is firmly resting on the frame rails, disengage PTO and re-engage hoist control lever lock. Cab controls. In addition to what we have already reviewed, there are additional cab controls to be aware of. The air pressure regulator is located next to the driver's seat. This system controls the body equipment added to the truck and operates off the air supplied by the chassis. 
the air pressure regulator should read 100 PSI. Adjust the yellow knob to increase or decrease pressure, reading from the gauge. The brass valve is a PECOF valve. Switch to turn off when servicing body and equipment. Routine maintenance. Your care of the equipment is important. See external manual for additional diagrams and instructions. System. This video does not replace the need to read the manual for full instructions. Before maintaining your equipment, body and hoist props need to be engaged. Your unit has been equipped with two body props when in the traditional raised position and one body prop when in the side tilt position. The truck should be turned off, keys removed, and tires should be chalked. The truck must be on level solid ground. Engage the lockout control handle collar in order to prevent the hoist from being raised while servicing. Also remember to turn off the brass peck-off valve. Follow these steps before performing any service or maintenance. Weekly maintenance. Your hoist should be lubricated at least once a week, more under heavy use conditions. Use the same grease as recommended on the chassis. Check the hydraulic oil and reservoir for proper level. Extend the cylinder full stroke, block the body, and check the oil level and tank by removing the oil level plug. The unit has a total of 21 grease fittings. There are 11 tubes that make up the hinge for the pivot side assembly. They are located just to the left of the left hand long member running lengthwise of the body. Six are welded to the subframe and do not move or need to be greased. Five are welded to the pivot side and therefore rotate as the side is raised. The hoses for some of these fittings are routed to the leading edge of the right hand rear corner post. The others are routed to the trailing edge of the right hand front corner post along with those from the upper hoist trunnion area. Again, refer to the operator manual for specific locations. All grease fittings should be greased weekly. Monthly maintenance. In addition to the pre-trip inspection and weekly maintenance, check your unit monthly for the following. Tightness of bolts, integrity of welds, inspect driveline for possible wear, and check set screws for tightness and lock wire position. Purge system of entrapped air and hydraulic system. Check for oil leaks as well as checking the color of oil for possible contamination. Change the oil filter as needed, recommended at approximately 50 hours. Additionally, on an annual level, we recommend the oil in the system to be changed at least once a year. Finally, Use high-quality testing equipment able to withstand 2,500 PSI minimum pressure. All major repairs should be provided by an authorized distributor. Thank you for your time today. DuraClass appreciates your business and wants to help you use your equipment efficiently. Please refer to our manual or contact DuraClass for any further information.